everybody! My name is Laura and I'm the host of SVP Kids Online Church where we like to sing and pray and have fun while we hear God's word and we learn about how awesome it is to live a life following Jesus. I am so excited to be spending today with you. If you're here, that means you're a friend. You can be a friend whether you're a little kid, a big kid, or a kid at heart. And one of the things we get to do when we spend time together is become better friends. Not only that though, we're not just becoming better friends with each other, we get to become better friends with Jesus. How cool is that? Welcome back to our current series called Blueprints where we're talking all about our feelings or another word for that is our emotions. To help get us started on what we're learning about today, I have a question for you. What is one thing that helps you feel better when you're feeling sad or down? Maybe you feel better when you hang out with your friends or when you talk to someone you trust, or you feel better when you pray to God or when you try to think of things to be thankful for. What works for you though? What is something that you do to help you feel better? We all have different things that make us feel better when we're feeling down. And we can all feel down from time to time. When we're feeling down with feelings of sadness, we can remember that God comforts us. And that is what we're going to learn about today. So, to help you remember it, I want you to repeat after me. When I feel down, God comforts me. Good. Okay, let's say it all together. Are you ready? When I feel down, God comforts me. Good. That's right. I want you to remember this truth. And so to help you remember it, pay attention to see how many times you hear it today and try to sing it along with the video when you hear it. So that by the end of today, you'll remember that when I feel down, God comforts me. Okay. I hope and I know that what we're going to see next is going to be really helpful to remind us that God is such a wonderful and loving God. So keep watching. I think it's going to be fun. It's time to play hard hat trivia. See if you know the answers to these hard hitting construction questions. If you do, shout it out. What structure in Italy is known for its 5.5 degree tilt? Is it A, the tipping point of Prada, or B, the leaning tower of Pisa? If you guessed B, you're correct. The leaning tower of Pisa is a freestanding bell tower in Italy that has been leaning for almost 840 years. You can go inside, but make sure you're ready to climb some stairs. There are almost 300 on each side. Which ancient structure is said to be made of over 2 million blocks of limestone? A. The Great Wall of China B. The Great Pyramid of Giza Or C. The Colosseum in Rome It's B. The Great Pyramid of Giza stands at over 455 feet tall and is made of more than 2 million bricks of limestone. No one knows if the workers dragged, lifted, or rolled the blocks into place over 4,000 years ago. Last question. What construction vehicle has a big blade on the front and is used to move things like dirt and snow? A. Dump truck B. Excavator C. Bulldozer or D. Paver Bulldozer is correct! This hardworking piece of construction equipment can move massive loads and has even been used on the moon! Great job! What's up, friends? My name is Nicole. Get on your feet because it's time to worship God! With all my mind and strength 
Take a seat. From painting your room a new fun color to mega tall cranes placing beams on a downtown skyscraper, things are under construction all around us. And it's exciting to watch it all because you never know what's going to happen, especially on the hit construction show, Build It. Check this out. Hey, Skip, how's it going? Did you get that toilet situation fixed? Sue's, Sue's, Sue's. Toilet situation? We don't have time for your bathroom humor today. I expected more from you. What? No, Skip, don't you remember? The pipes are broken and now the toilet is out of order. If we try to use it, it will literally explode, like water everywhere. Never fear, I just need to brush up. Maybe we should call a plumber? Nah, I got this. Okay, well, I wouldn't wait too long if I were you. It's the only toilet in the building, and if it's not working, that could spell trouble. Suze, you worry too much. It'll get done. I'm counting on you. We don't have a lot of time. But really, what is time? Plus, I just need to finish a few things around here. Like this Zing Cola. <sighs> 128 ounces of pure deliciousness. Now, this Minecraft tower isn't going to build itself. <laughs> and if I had to choose between Minecraft and a toilet, well, that's a no brainer. Oh man, um, okay. So, that 128 ounces of cola is kind of sneaking up on me. Um, Skip, mind over matter. Think about something that doesn't have to do with what needs to happen. Like, I don't know, um, waterfalls or a big swimming pools or ha ha, didn't work, didn't work. Okay, time to do the dance, time to do the dance. Not working either. Um, I gotta do what I gotta do. This is not a good look. What have I done? Oh no, Skip. I was gonna ask what happened, but I think I already know. Suze, this is awful. Today was going so great. I had my Minecraft, a soda the size of my head. I was just kicking back, living my best life. Now this is the worst day ever. I... I just don't even say it. I know what you're gonna say. I told you so, Skip. You should have fixed the toilet, or at least tried to call a plumber. But that'll make me feel even worse. Skip, I was gonna say I'm sorry you feel down. Yeah, you made a mistake, but I will help you get all cleaned up and it'll be good as new. Really, Suze? Really, really. 
You know what would make me feel better? A hug. Are you sure that's the only thing that will make you feel better? Oh, come on, Suze. It's just a small gesture, and it would bring me so much comfort. Okay, okay. Hugs are the best. Um, give me one second. Okay, ready for that hug now. Here's what you need to know today. When I feel down, God comforts me. Let's play this or that. Emoji edition. Round one. Stop and see if you can name how Skip and Susanna feel. If you think the answer is on this side of the screen, wave your hands this way. But if the answer is on that side of the screen, wave your hands that way. How did Susanna feel about Skip not fixing the toilet? Worried or cool? Wave your hands to the correct answer. That's right, Susanna was feeling worried. When Skip realized he needed to use the toilet and there wasn't one to use, was he feeling peaceful or stressed? Wave your hands now. Right again. Skip felt stressed because he really had to go. If you think Skip felt sad and upset after he was covered in toilet water, wave your hands this way. But if you think he felt tired and bored, wave your hands that way. You got it. Skip was sad, upset, and felt really down. Way to go. That's how you stop and name your feelings. Round two. Let's look around at what was really going on. If you think the answer is on this side of the screen, pat your legs. But if the answer is on that side of the screen, stomp your feet. What did Skip realize that made him feel so down? He couldn't play Minecraft anymore? Or he had made a big mistake? Pat your legs or stomp your feet. Skip felt down because he made a mistake and thought it had ruined the whole day. True or false? Skip put off fixing the toilet and did other things he liked better instead. If you think it's true, pat your legs. But if you think it's false, stomp your feet. It's true. When Skip put off doing something important, it caused a big problem for him. Did Skip think Susanna would be mad and disappointed? Yes or no? Pat your legs or stomp your feet. Yes, but Susanna was a good friend and comforted him. Instead of feeling so down, Skip could have realized the mess could be cleaned and Susanna would be around to help. He just needed to stop, look, and listen. The best thing to listen to is God's blueprint for life, the Bible. Check this out. Hey, everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Oh, yeah. What you got for us today? Today we're talking about when we feel down. Oh, that's the worst feeling. Like when you get a bad grade or your brother knocks over your Lego tower? The one that took over a week to build? When you're feeling down, you can remember it's not the end of the world. God is always there to comfort you. This reminds me of a guy in the Bible named Jonah and how God comforted him when he was feeling down in the dumps. Oh man, did his best friend move away? That would make me feel pretty upset. That would be hard to deal with. Jonah was down because he didn't want to do something that God had asked him to do. God asked him to go to a place called Nineveh and tell the people living there to stop being bad. Makes sense. Get them to stop being bad. Like, hey guys, cut it out! Done and done. Easy. Well, there was just one problem. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He knew the people there were not acting the way that they should. But instead of helping them, he thought they should be punished for their mistakes. So what, he wanted God to like ground them or something? Something like that. Instead of listening to God and going to Nineveh, Jonah took off in the opposite direction. Oh no! Oh yes, Jonah ran all the way to the sea, found a ship, and paid the captain to let him come aboard. Then Jonah found a place inside to lay down and take a nap. Taking a snooze? Not listening to God must be pretty exhausting. I'm not sure, but as soon as the boat left the shore, a very bad storm came up and started tossing the boat around. Back and forth and back and forth. I bet there was lightning, crash, and thunder, 
and waves crashing over the boat. Everyone was so afraid that they started to throw their stuff overboard in hopes that they wouldn't drown. Overboard! The captain went to find Jonah and said, how can you sleep? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he can help us. Meanwhile, the sailors decided that the storm was Jonah's fault. They were probably all like, Jonah, what have you done? Make it stop. Exactly. And Jonah told them, I believe in the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land, and I am running away from something God asked me to do. It's my fault this is happening. If you throw me into the sea, the storm will stop. Speaking of stop, stop right there. Are you saying that Jonah told the sailors to throw him off the boat? I mean, I get it that Jonah probably fell down because he was putting these men in this storm, but that's crazy talk. You heard me right. The men didn't want to do it, but after praying, they knew they had to. They picked up Jonah and threw him into the water. Instantly, the storm was over and the sea became still. So that's the end of Jonah? No, no way. Get this. When they threw Jonah off the boat, he was swallowed up by a great big fish. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? God actually sent the fish to keep Jonah from drowning, and he stayed in the fish for three days and three nights. Oh, man, that's comforting, but I can't even imagine. No windows and covered in disgusting fish guts for three whole days? Yuck! While Jonah was inside the fish, he did a lot of praying and said, When my life was nearly over, I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose up to you. You are the one who saves. Then God told the fish to spit Jonah out onto dry land. I bet Jonah was happy to be out of that fish. He probably needed the longest shower in the history of showers. Then the Lord told Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh and tell the people there to stop being bad. Please tell me he listened this time. Oh, he sure did. Jonah obeyed God and left for Nineveh right away. When Jonah got there, he told the people to stop doing bad things or their city would be destroyed. To Jonah's surprise, the people listened and the city was saved. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Well, that could be the end of the story, except Jonah left the city feeling down. He was upset that God didn't punish them all. So Jonah went on a hill and sulked. When God saw Jonah, he knew how Jonah was feeling and comforted him. God explained to Jonah that he loves everyone and would rather see people turn from their bad ways and do good again. So God comforted Jonah when he was feeling down? Yep, and he'll comfort us too, no matter what we're going through. Even in the belly of a fish? Even in the belly of a fish. Because when we're feeling down, God comforts us. When I feel down, God comforts me. Everybody get on your feet. It's time to play Match the Moves. Watch the corners light up and be ready to repeat the pattern you see. Each round will add to the pattern and speed it up. Let's practice our moves. Jump, duck, twist, and shout. Now you're ready. Round one. Watch the pattern closely. Jump, twist, shout. Your turn. It's time for round two. Watch carefully. Jog, twist, shout, jog, duck. Let's see your moves. Last round. It's getting faster now. Jog, twist, shout, jog, duck, twist, shout. Match the moves. You did it. You can all take a seat. Let's play Piece It Together. In order to piece together this puzzle, answer a few questions. In today's Bible story, did Jonah feel excited about what God asked him to do? Yes or no? No, he felt down and didn't want to obey. You got it. Now it's time for our next question. True or false? While Jonah was running away from where God wanted him to go, he got on a train. False. Jonah ran away on a boat. But when a storm came up, 
the sailors threw him overboard and God sent a big fish to swallow him up. We're getting closer to piecing this picture together. Let's answer one last question. When God saw that Jonah was feeling down, did he punish Jonah or comfort him? God comforted Jonah. And whenever we're feeling down, God will comfort us too. Now that we have three pieces of our picture in place, see if you can piece it together. Shout it out when you know what it is. It's a hard hat. Let's memorize this verse together. But even if we don't feel at ease, God is greater than our feelings and He knows everything. 1 John 3.20 See if you can remember the words that have been paved over. But even if we don't feel at... But even if we don't feel at ease, God is... God is greater than our feelings. And He... He knows everything. 1st 3.20 1st John 3.20 Nice work! Let me tell you about a time where I needed to stop, look, and listen. A couple of years ago, my dog Belle passed away. When I lost Belle, I didn't feel like myself. Nothing seemed fun. Not even going to school, playing basketball, or looking through my awesome Pokemon card collection. It felt like my emotions were taken over. That's when I had to stop and take a deep breath to name what I was feeling. And that's when I realized that I was actually feeling really sad. Next, I looked at what was going on and realized it was okay to be sad. Belle was one of my best friends. I shared so many memories with her. It was normal to miss her. Then, I knew I needed to listen to what God says about it. So I opened my Bible and turned to Isaiah 41.10, which says, So don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. Even though I was feeling down, God helped me realize that He was with me. And that gave me a lot of comfort. So the next time you're feeling something and need to deal with how you feel, Remember to stop, look, and listen. One way to deal with all of your feelings is to worship God. So get on your feet. It's time to sing. You know when I'm lonely. You know when I'm sad. I know. And then you are with me. Yeah, you are with me. trust you. Yeah, I can trust you. You don't want perfection. You just want my best. And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest. God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything. Everything God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything, He knows everything. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm tired, I know. And then you are with me, yeah, you are with me. You know when I'm worried, you know when I'm mad, I know. And then I can trust you. You 
are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not You are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not God is greater than my feelings He knows everything He knows everything God is greater than my feelings He knows everything He knows everything He knows everything Great singing. You can all take a seat. Now, let's talk to God. Everyone bow your head, close your eyes, and pray with me. Hey God, thank you for loving us and comforting us whenever we feel down. We love you. Amen. Wow, that was an awesome way to learn that when I feel down, God comforts me. Do you remember what happened in our Bible passage that we learned about today? What did Jonah do that was wrong? Do you remember? Yeah, he didn't go to the place that God told him to go. Bonus question, do you remember what the place name was called? It was, it was Nineveh, good, yeah. Jonah disobeyed God by not going to Nineveh after God told him to go there. Why did God want Jonah to go to Nineveh? Yes, God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh to help the people there make better choices. But Jonah was afraid to go, wasn't he? So he got on a boat and went on the other direction. But then a storm came. And then what did he tell the people on the boat to do? That's right. He had to be thrown overboard. When he, when the men threw Jonah off the boat, what happened to him? This is such a wild story. A big giant fish came and swallowed him up. Whoa, that's wild. God sent a fish to swallow Jonah so he wouldn't drown in the ocean. Jonah made mistakes that left him feeling down, but God was there to comfort him. This story reminds us that like Jonah, we can trust that God is always with us and gives us comfort when we're feeling down or sad. In order to deal with how we feel, we need to stop and name how we're feeling. We need to look around and see what's really going on around us, and we need to listen to hear what God says. And remember, one of the things we're learning today about what God says is what we need to know. So let's say it together. When I feel down, God comforts me. There's a verse in our Blueprints for Life, the Bible, that tells us what God says about dealing with our feelings. Let's practice it together. Start by saying it after me. 1 John 3, 20. But even if we don't feel at ease, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. 1 John 3, 20. Awesome job. Do you think you can say it with me now? Let's try it, here we go. 1 John 3, 20. But even if we don't feel at ease, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. 1 John 3, 20. Excellent, good job. This verse is going to be really helpful for us to remember. God is greater than our feelings. Okay friends, next week, is our very last week with this verse. So I want you to practice it all week long so you'll know it by the time we get back together next week, okay? This has been such a great day learning about our feelings and how to name them and how God wants to help us with them. One of the ways that we can make sure God is helping us is by talking to him about how we feel. And talking to God is praying. So let's pray together now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hey God, Thank you for comforting us when we feel down. Help us to remember that you love us and that you're always with us. We love you. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I feel like we just built such a great time together and some really important lessons. Before you run off to construct the rest of your day, you and your family might be interested in these important notes. Online church isn't the only way to experience all of the SBP Kids fun. 
You can also join us at SBP Kids Live on Sunday mornings at St. Benedict Parish. Kids in elementary school, so primary to grade six, can join us downstairs at the 9 a.m. and the 11.30 a.m. Mass for SBP Kids Live. Just come on downstairs at the beginning of Mass or before Mass begins to hang out with us in the big room downstairs. And if you're younger or have little siblings, they can come to Little SBP Kids, which happens at 9 a.m. Parents can drop little kids, that's pre-primary and younger, off at the desk down the stairs. So just come down the stairs and down the hall and you'll find little SBP kids. And if you are in older elementary, so that's grades four, five, and six, you can still come and hang out with us on Sunday mornings at SBP Kids Live. But I also want to invite you to something called The Encounter. The Encounter is a youth group for kids who are in grades four, five, and six. And we have so much fun. It happens on Wednesday nights at St. Benedict Parish and online at Zoom. So if you can't come in person, you can still come online. Um, I cannot wait to see you there. To sign up and to get more information, you can go to stbenedict.ca slash youth and finding the information about the encounter. Did you know that we make two SBP Kids online church videos every week? That's right, we have a video for elementary kids and a video for preschoolers. You can find both of those videos over on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash stbp. You can also find all of the previous SVP Kids online church videos we have made, and we have made a lot now, so that's super cool. Um, subscribe to our YouTube page so you never miss the fun. All right, friends, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me this week. You made me one happy person. I am so glad that God is bigger than our feelings and that he cares about us and our feelings enough to want to help us. So. Make a plan to talk to God about your feelings this week and also to stop and pay attention to how you're feeling, look around to see what's really happening, and then listen to what God says when he helps you. All right, we've had such a great time today and I cannot wait to see you next week, and I hope I do. All right, see you then.